So, hi, I'm Vilus from Vilnius uh, Wix Engineering Offices. Some of you might know me, if not, then you know, if you know Vilnius, then it's easy to kind of um, correlate. And I'm, I'm, I'm with Wix almost uh, four years or something around four years, or I stopped counting. Um, I started as a backend Scala engineer. And then I, you know, found this neat language JavaScript with Node attached. And uh, actually, ever since, uh, I'm mostly working on Node and JavaScript, and, and currently with the Fed Guild. So today's talk is like a lot of words and numbers, and I guess you read it more like this, right? So I'll go step by step and decompose it and, you know, uh, walk you by, by a thing or two. So the, the first piece of, of the talk title is a module. So it's after module, modular programming, which is a software design technique uh, that emphasizes separating the functionality of a program into independent and inter interchangeable pieces. Now, a model uh, encapsulates code and data, has a clear interface, uh, is easy pluggable and in, in itself replaceable with another model with same interface, and is usually packaged uh, in a single unit. So, you know, all of us like consume, produce models, be it NPM, Maven, microservice for that matter. Now, another uh, important thing is NPM. This is the Fed track, so I guess all of you know NPM. Who doesn't know NPM? At least somebody, because I have slides to explain. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so NPM is a node package manager. Here you go. Um, actually, it's, it's not what it is, but you know, um, there are some really amazing ideas behind it and traits. So one thing is that uh, it gave uh, an easy entry. So basically from nothing to publishing a new module, which others can consume, uh, you can go in, in, in a minute if you're fast with your fingers. Um, another important thing is semantic versioning. So it's, it's a way to signal your consumers uh, about, you know, if your API is changing, is it a fix, is it a breaking change or a new feature. Uh, and uh, another amazing uh, thing in Node is isolation, meaning that you can have multiple versions of the uh, same module in your application, and it's fine. It's business as usual, you know, it, it works uh, without any problems, unlike some other platforms, like, for example, JVM. Monorepo. So Monorepo is a single repository holding code of multiple projects or modules. So if you want to work with multiple uh, modules, you have two ways to go about it. Either you go the classical way, where each module resides in a separate repo, uh, and then you know if you need to do changes that are cross-cutting, you cannot do it in an atomic way, or otherwise you have to work, you know, you publish one, you do changes in another one, and it's kind of painful, whereas in Monorepo, you basically can, uh, can do an atomic change across group of your modules or projects and push them as a you know, single atomic action. And in Monorepo, when working with multiple modules, you can have a single lint build and test process, uh, it's much easier to coordinate changes across the group of modules and, uh, you know, even for your users, uh, they have a single place where they can report issues. Now, this 140 module thing, uh, what is it? By the way, when I submitted the talk a couple of months ago, it was 120. <laughs> so this is what you see in the in agenda. Now I think we're at uh, 141. Um, so the thing I'm talking about is Wix Node Platform. Who knows Wix Node Platform? Okay, nice. 
So I guess I can skip this one as well, right? Um, so those 140 modules basically um, build up the bootstrap. So the thing, you know, the framework or platform that you use to run services at Wix, uh, it has around 10 plus uh, plugins for bootstrap. So uh, these are modules that you can plug in to extend Bootstrap to provide you some functionality. That, that would be a, an example. Uh, for example, MySQL. You want to you know, uh, query data from MySQL, you add a plugin, and you have all the monitoring, configuration, everything done for you. You just get pre-configured MySQL client. Uh, then there are a bunch of test kits for whatever you need, actually, and around 30 plus opt-in modules. So those could be express middlewares, uh, some logging libraries, or, or many other things that, that you know, uh, are opt-in and you might just need. And now you, you might you know, have a question like, but why? It's like you could build it into one module, right? Why go this, this whole all-out way? Um, well, what I found is that uh, in dynamic languages, I really like the modules because they give you really clear interface and really clear boundary. Because, you know, it's really easy to, to go all messy in your code because we have pressure, product, new stuff needs to be released, and it's really easy to slip and hard to come back and code base can get a sort of messy, but with many modules, interfaces are really clear and boundaries are built in a way that you cannot really cross in whatever you do. Uh, also, NPM allows you to keep it you know, cheap because NPM installs nowadays are really um, fast, in Node at least, you know. <laughs> uh, and, um, and you don't have uh, problems with multiple versions of a module. So, so this plays to, to, to my advantage. Uh, and so basically, you know, you get all the benefits of uh, modular programming with a price to pay, which is you have to manage the beast. And by managing, I mean that from my, as a developer's perspective, working on a thing, uh, I want to be in a state where I wouldn't feel much difference if I would be working with one or many modules. So I wouldn't have to do any, you know, stupid re repetitive work or I uh, have some more stuff in my head, context to think about. The experience should be quite similar. Okay, it clicked. Uh, so, you know, now let, let's walk down the memory lane, how it all went, because I didn't wake up with 140 modules, right? <laughs> that would be quite a terrible day, I guess. Uh, basically, it, it happened throughout around uh, three years. And you can see that, you know, growth was quite linear, right? During that time, uh, me and not only me, we had to build actually a lot of tools, not a lot, several, I guess, tools to support this, you know, many module uh, style of work. Uh, and also there were external factors. So, uh, which some of them uh, were inspiration, for example, uh, Lerna. Some of them uh, were just free food, uh, NPM 5. And some of them were <laughs> complications, like our push to monorepo thing, right? Now, when, when we had only like from zero to 21 modules, it was, it was really amazing because like there is nothing to manage. You just build stuff, you just write code, you know, you have your cowboy hat on and you publish from localhost. And these modules are not really connected, so it's, it's all, all fun. And these modules basically were, so you know that uh, Node is a second backend platform, right? We have JVM. So these modules were POCs or experiments or just see if we can actually, you know, build something that could work in Wix uh, production. So it was a lot of fun. Um, then at around 21 modules, 
uh, we got the syndrome of works on my machine. So we were around three developers at that time. So I do something, you know, I change the module, I push it, uh, then another Kfir pulls it, for example, uh, and and now his his module doesn't work. Then he pushes, does the same for me, and you know. It kind of stopped being that much fun because now you're debugging, debugging and trying to figure out what's going on. But then uh, another important project was happening at that time, which was Wix code. I'm not sure it, we knew it's going to be Wix code, but still. And, and the crew from there faced similar problems. And what they did, uh, they built a tool. Wait. Hmm? Yeah, they build a tool. Uh, basically, that would give us a snapshot-like release for NPM modules, so that I wouldn't have to think about versions, do manual releases or anything. I just write my tests, write my code to push, push to master, CI picks it up and publishes a new version. So it's uh, similar to snapshot-like releases for Maven. And another thing that happened, uh, we got CI support. So because the, the, there wasn't for breaking up monorepos into, into you know, many builds. Uh, at this point, uh, we were still breaking each other, but at least we, it was really clear who to blame, right? Because there is in CI, you can see a commit that did that. So now, you, now I can tell Kfir, like, Kfir, come on, you know, <laughs> can you just take care of it? So it was better, right? It was improvement, not amazing, but, but we wanted, wanted more. Because CI is mostly red and I have to, you know, talk to somebody about it. What we did, what we usually do in Wix, we build a tool. That was a B build. Uh, by the way, it was before there was Learner or anything like that. There was nothing, you know, for, for us in the industry. And B build was a simple tool. Um, where you could build uh, JVM, Docker, or NPM modules as a single graph, so it would, you know, calculate graph, top assort it, and build in a sequence with a fixed workflow. And really nice feature they had was incremental builds, Ma meaning that if I build all my modules once, next next run is a no-op. If I change some module in the middle of a graph, it builds only you know from that point. So now actually uh, Kfir could could verify you know state of the module graph uh, before pushing to master and breaking CI. So you know some sort of civilization came to our workflow. Now, another really annoying part was uh, at around 23 to 48 that I couldn't work effectively with my ID. Okay, so I'm IntelliJ guy, sorry about that, but, um, but I really was used to working uh, with, a, with a like Maven uh, repos or projects where you, in your ID, you have all your modules available, you can search through them, refactor, and you know, you have that way of working, which is really effective. And in this case, uh, the, the NPM support was pretty much non-existent. For one module, it was great. For many modules, IntelliJ just said, like, no. Guess what we did? We wrote a tool. Obviously, uh, so it was by def idea, where we basically uh, you run it again in the root of your repo, and it generates you all the IntelliJ XMLs, and you open it, and you work, you know, again like with with your many modules as a single uh, graph, and you can refactor, search, and do whatever you know makes you productive. At about same time. Uh, we built actually the first version of Bootstrap or something that Wix engineers can take, build their services on and deploy to uh, production. 
then, you know, it's production, right? So you have to be serious. And we got into sort of version hell. Because if you have one module, it's really easy. There is one package JSON, and you can see everything. All your dependencies, dev dependencies, versions. If you have 50 modules, so what is the state, you know? Uh, what dependencies do I have where versions and, and everything? Guess what we did? Obviously, we wrote a tool, which like API, you know, now when I look at it, is, is, is really terrible, uh, even worse. But basically what, what I could do, so I reused the internals of bbuild for all graph, you know, resolution and everything. Uh, and I could export the state of my module graph uh, to a JSON then edit it by hand and reapply it to my modules. And it would just, you know, mutate package JSONs. And it wasn't amazing, but at least I could take care of it. You know, it wasn't just stupid go around the place and try to find it and replace. At around 64 modules, we already had several services in production. And user feedback started, you know, we got, like we started getting user feedback, which was from the, yay, you know, power to the people uh, and to, damn, your API suck. Which I, you know, now, now again, when I look at it, the first version was not the greatest. And this is one of the instances where uh, having many modules, you know, uh, really, really played to our advantage. Because actually the bootstrap was uh, just a composition of all the 50 or 60 modules. So what, what I could actually do is take two weeks, not off actually, it was, you know, focus on my work and, you know, and do a rewrite. Whereas I, you know, I cannot recall exactly, but I think uh, like five or six module APIs changed. But otherwise, there was just Bootstrap NG, which, which was recompositioned, but the rest of the graph stayed, you know, the same. And this is the thing we all are using right now. So even if API is not that great, well, <laughs> sorry. Uh, now around 80 modules. Um, third, things started to getting really slow. So for clean build, it was taking me uh, around 45 minutes, which is not that great, right? Uh, the clean build wasn't, I didn't do that that often. Usually I use the incremental build, so I wasn't really suffering, you know, that much, but, but this was a bit beyond, you know, my level of tolerance. So, um, guess what I did? Oh, sorry, not, not what I did yet. Um, yeah, actually, I took a look at B-Build, and you know why it's taking that long? There shouldn't be a reason. And I saw that, uh, so, so B-Build had fixed workflow. You run it, and it does npm install, build test for each module. And no npm install actually can take you from three to 10 seconds with npm free. Uh, then it was sequential, right? So it couldn't parallelize anything. Uh, as well as it had a feature that each of the modules could have a, like separate node version by an NVM file. And this, this was something I didn't really need. So then, now I went and I did what we usually do. I rewrote the B-Build. Because B-Build was really great for like generic use case, but it didn't play well for, for my specific, you know, huge monorepo use case. And I replaced it with Octopus, where I took ideas even from Maven, Lerna, um, B-Build, and actually I took some code from B-Build. Uh, took all the tools and ideas for version management and IntelliJ project generation and create basically a CLI tool that uh, solved my one of the pains is took the build time to around 20 minutes. So I was again, you know, my thought, like I was okay with the time it took. And then at around 97 modules, uh, 
it was slowing down again, but then they released NPM 5. And it was really amazing because it was, what, free food. The, the speed went from uh, 27 to around 17 minutes. So I love those, you know, most when you don't do anything and things just happen. But what I noticed that, again, uh, new requirements were coming in. For, for example, you know, initially there was no build on the modules because it's, it was targeted at Node. Right, so, so there is no browser or in anything. Uh, but then some of the modules, uh, I, I was asked to make them universal, so they could work on the SSR environment, on the browser. And for, for that, I had to go and change Octopus to enable you know, some additional build phases or some variations, go, go to update the idea generation and everything. And it was really, really, like the feedback wasn't what I really liked. Because I go to Octopus, add a feature there, publish it, then go to my repo, install it, and only then I can use it. And guess what I did? I did a rewrite. And actually, this was the, the nicer one, because I threw away a bunch of code. I took Lerna as a basis. Uh, and I added a scripting support on top of the learner to compensate for features that I needed, but it didn't provide. For example, it doesn't support anything like incremental builds, but so I just did it via scripting layer. And learner script is a really simple beast. Basically, you just add a learner JS file. It has a bunch of wrappers for internal learner APIs. And, and you export a script, which you can later execute. And by doing this, um, that enabled me actually, without you know, going away from my main work, uh, to iterate and, and, you know, and try out, change stuff really fast. So um, I did a bunch of experiments, uh, worked on my CI, you know, hardening CI workflow, and bunch and bunch of stuff. Around from 104 to 130 modules, we got this monorepo when we had to move our stuff to a single repo, right? I was sort of monorepo already, but uh, as well, I had some free floating modules, which I wanted to be kind of separate, but I had to move them in to Wix Node platform. And, and by adding them, shit, I did a spoiler, uh, the, the things started getting slow again. And then, I guess I did something right before, uh, by using Lerna and just toggling a feature, a hoisting, my uh, NPM install on the repo, not the whole build, basically went from 15 to two minutes. So it's again kind of a free food, or I did something right in previous life type of thing. Um, so this is you know just one example of of uh, reuse or using the, the the crowd crowd wisdom and existing build up. Now the staying sane part. So it was it was. Three years. Uh, it was uh, an interesting <laughs> trip, I would say. Uh, many, you know, tools written, rewritten, and and when I look back at it, th there was nothing really advanced there. I just followed one rule, which I could say ser serves me well uh, in my line of work, is that you know the system is working, talking with you. Sorry. So whatever that would be, uh, you know, CI is breaking, you deploy to production, something breaks, or working with monorepo and feeling pains. So like environment system is talking to you. And you, you just need to listen to it. That's what I think, you know, I did. And act. So, you know, these tools, approaches, and practices were nothing but uh, listening to, to what is painful, what makes my life harder, and acting on it. Thank you. Yes.
Uh, have you tried building Node platform on Bazel? So the, the answer was no. Uh, for one thing, uh, Bazel is a, is a really good uh, base to build on. Like its, its core idea and concept is, is really good. A foundation is really right, but but you 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 have to build, you know, uh, I think a lot of stuff to actually move there, and and uh, so no. Although it should be fairly easy because there is not not much build going on there. It's mostly tests, but hopefully hopefully in some day. Uh, have I tried Yarn workspaces? Um, I did experiment with them. Um, so even, you know, this hoisting feature, right? This is what Yarn Workspace does. It, it, it's not really free food. Because what happens, so who knows what the hoisting means? Okay, so when, when I have a, a file system with a bunch of modules, or, or let's start the other way around. Uh, so when you do require in your JavaScript file, uh, what Node does, it looks for the module in current working directory Node modules. If it doesn't find it there, it goes up to the root file system, and I think then it goes to globals. So hoisting is utilizing this behavior, and if across your module graph, uh, let's say Mocha has a single version, it's installed once in the root of your project. And then, you know, this lookup happens, I mean, there is a smarter thing. And this is all nice, because it's fast, but what might happen is actually that in your module, you use, you do require Lodash, but you don't have it in your package JSON as dependency. But given it's hoisted by some other module to the root, everything works nicely. And it only breaks in production for my clients. So, you know, so, to mitigate that, uh, I have a CI, my CI build uh, builds in a slow way, right, without hoisting, because I want to have confidence. And I have like yes, lint rules as well to, to, to catch those, because I don't want to break my clients. Uh, Yarn workspaces, I'm not a big fan of Yarn. Uh, and and they, they do the sim similar thing, and after NPM 5 was released, basically, um, it's pretty much the same, I guess. Thank you again.